In today's episode, I'm hoping to shed a little bit of light on the mystery that is candle math. And I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, you'll have a good understanding of how to measure exactly how much wax and fragrance oil you need for virtually any mold or container, even wax melts, you can use this method. I'm gonna spend some time running down the theory of exactly how to figure out the wax and fragrance oil. So we're gonna do a little bit of math. We're gonna do a little bit of proof of concept here. We're gonna jump in, let's look at this. So let's say that we have our candle here and we fill it with our wax and our fragrance. Or our, our wax is gonna take up some amount of this. This is our wax and our fragrance oil will take up the rest. Literally every scented candle is made up of wax and fragrance oil. Even if you blend your wax, it's still wax. Even if you blend your fragrance oil, it's still fragrance oil. But the entire weight of this thing, this entire weight, the total weight of our candle is gonna be equal to our wax weight plus our fragrance oil weight. Taking this one step further, we know that our fragrance oil can be compared to our wax by a percentage, by a percentage. And we call this percentage the fragrance load. And this is where we really do apply some math. So the fragrance load is the percentage by weight, by weight of fragrance oil. Fragrance oil. And we can represent it with what I'm gonna call a variable F. And F is typically anywhere from 0%, meaning you have no fragrance oil, to 12%. There are some waxes that can hold up to 12%. But when you're designing a candle, you pretty much just get to pick whatever fragrance load you feel you wanna try out. And if you're just starting out, I recommend start with something a little bit lower, which means that the fragrance load is the gateway for figuring out how much fragrance oil we need in a candle. And that's simply a calculation of multiplying our wax weight, wax by the proposed fragrance load. Well, we can combine both of these equations into one equation with a little bit of substitution. Well, we can rewrite this first equation, total weight equals our wax plus our fragrance oil. But our second equation actually told us what our fragrance oil equals, right? So I'm gonna actually substitute this in and instead of saying fragrance oil, instead of saying fragrance oil, I know that it equals wax times our fragrance load. They're literally the same thing. That's how we calculate it. So rather than writing FO, I'm actually gonna write, well here, I'll write FO at first. Instead of write, rewriting the exact same equation as what's on the left here, I'm gonna substitute this other equation of wax times our fragrance load. And here's where we're gonna do a slight bit of algebra to rewrite this in a slightly different way. But I'm gonna say the total weight equals our wax, and our wax is being multiplied by one on the left and also by F on the right so we can pull wax out because it's being distributed. One plus F. Okay, and then if we divide both sides by one plus F, we can rewrite this entire thing as total weight dividing by one plus F on both sides, total weight divided by one plus our fragrance load equals our wax. So this is the money equation right here. Well, you may be asking yourself, okay, Kevin, cool, but like, how do we know what the total weight is? So let's break that down a little bit. Our total weight. Well, the total weight of the candle, some people would say just fill the container with water and whatever the water weighs, that's what 
how much wax you need to measure out. Well, that's not really entirely accurate, but we are going to take water and transform it into an equivalent total weight. And we do this with the following assumption. We've measured that on average, about 3.5 ounces of water will take up the same amount of space as three ounces of wax. Which means that we have a conversion factor of roughly 0.86 to convert water weight into wax weight. Putting this into an equation, it looks a little bit like this. Our total weight, our total weight actually equals our water weight, H2O weight times 0 0.86. So how do we put all this together? Well, quite simply, the first thing we'll do with any container is to measure, measure the water weight, measure, measure the water weight. Right, so find your container, fill it with water, figure out how much that water weighs. Make sure you don't include the weight of the container. Once you have that, we're gonna multiply that, multiply by the number of containers. Doing it now will make sure that we get rid of any errors that might be compounding from waiting to multiply our numbers later. If we're making three candles that are all the same container, then we only need to measure the water weight in one of them and then multiply that by three to figure out the entire water weight for all the candles. So the next step is to find our total weight, total weight equals our water weight times 0 0.86. This is more technically known as the specific gravity or the relative density, however you wanna frame it up. And if you're curious about diving more into that, you can check out the resources in the description. But we'll stick with 0.86 as the average just to make this simple. The next step is to calculate our wax weight. So our wax weight is gonna equal, these aren't new equations, I'm just pulling these from the other, from the side, but this will equal our total weight, total weight, divided by, one plus our fragrance load, which we should have identified by now. And the final step is to take this equation up here, this idea that whatever isn't wax inside our candle is fragrance oil. And we'll say that our fragrance oil, fragrance oil should equal the total weight of the candle minus the wax weight, right? We could also multiply it. We could use this equation here and try to figure out how much it should be. And that wouldn't be wrong, but it's easy to introduce some errors, especially in smaller batch sizes. So let's do an example now, right? I'll, let me clear out some space here. We'll leave our five steps for what we need down there. Give me a second. So example number one here, we're gonna launch a new candle and we know that we have this container right here. We're gonna use some cool wax, but we're gonna have a pretty good fragrance load of about 7.5%. And we're also going to make four candles at the same time here. So four candles at the same time, we've got about 7.5% fragrance load so there's our wax this is definitely 7.5 percent down there so now we'll take our steps let's jump right into the math here so the first thing we're going to do is measure our water weight measure our water weight 
And when we do that, we put it on the scale, it comes out to about 82 grams. 82 grams. So step two is to multiply that by the number of containers. So four containers times 82 grams of water weight equals, equals 328 grams. So now we want to know the total weight. So if we have, we actually have four of these containers. Two, three, four. Right, and the total weight of all of these, the total weight, total weight, equals 328 grams times, times 0 0.86, and that gives us 282.08, which we will simplify as 282 grams. Step four is to find our wax weight. So how much wax do we need to melt down for these four containers in this batch? And that's going to be our equation wax equals our total weight, which was 282 grams. It's okay to round at that point. We're going to divide that by one plus 7.5%, which is 7.5 divided by 100. So this is the same as writing 282 grams divided by one plus 0 0.075. And when we run that through the calculator, we end up with 262.3 grams, which I would round to 262 grams. So the last step is to figure out how much fragrance oil do we need? And this is awfully simple, right? We know that in this entire batch, there's gonna be 282 grams of stuff. And 262 grams of that stuff is wax, which means that the remainder has to be fragrance oil. So 282 grams of total stuff, subtracting our wax, 262, and you probably already figured this out in your head, but we're gonna need 20 grams of fragrance oil. So for our batch, this batch, when we melt down our wax, we're gonna melt down 262 grams of wax, and off to the side, we'll measure out 20 grams of fragrance oil and really all that trouble just for those two numbers but we know that at the end after we pour we'll end up with a 7.5 percent fragrance load and we'll be able to make four candles in that container shape and so the beauty of this is it really simplifies it down to five major steps that you need to take and you could even combine one and two if you're feeling really cheeky but it does make it somewhat simple to step through the math. And you don't even have to understand all of this, but 0.86 is okay to use as your average. And just remember, everything we do with candle math is just to get us in the ballpark. We do want good quality control. We do want repetition. Don't stress too much if you don't fill it out exactly or if it doesn't turn out exactly how you want. But do use consistent methods to measure out exactly how much of each supply you're using because if you're trying to build a consistent product line you're never going to do it if you do it just by feeling now that might be okay with the story you're trying to tell every candle is unique but if someone loves what you did and they come back and ask for it if you don't know that it was a 7.5 percent fragrance load in that container well you're a little out of luck but anyways i hope this made sense if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will get to it as soon as possible. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful, well-calculated and supplied candles and I will see you in the next episode.